Hello, everybody. Welcome to the world of Tantra again. Uh, yeah, how are you all today? Good, how are you? Very good. And how has your life been so far? Um, so far, um, I think transforming. That's good. The best way I could describe it. Are you enjoying all the sessions with me? I am. Mm. And I give so much thanks to you. That's good. Okay, let's start with mantras again, as usual. So that we invoke a bit of uh, energy within our system. <clears throat> so I will start off again with Ganesh Mantra, as usual, with Ganesh Mantra. Because you don't start any work without his blessings. Okay? He's a big part of our spiritual life. Basically, okay, let's forget the him and her. Basically, Ganesh is an energy within who the energy resides in your base chakra. And Mother Kundali can only rise if, he, if the energy of Ganesh clears the cobwebs in our spine. So that's why it's always so, it, that's why he's known as the remover of obstacles. Not that he removes the obstacles on your path in life but it removes the obstacles in your spine so that your path in life would be more clear because you will have the energy, the focus and the, and the right attitude to live a life that is full. We came here to live a full life, a very experiential life so that we can go back home. The question here is this, the souls are not going back home to its original place. We are coming back every time and the new souls are coming into earth. So what we're doing is, is we're overcrowding earth because we have forgotten why we came to this earth and where we're going to go. This is where Tantra becomes a very unique uh, teaching that can help you realize your journey in this life. Instead of sticking to this world, coming back and suffering birth after birth. Because as long as you come back here, you, you're going to be tried. So there is a challenge for you all the time. <coughs> okay. Let's start with Ganesh so that he can remove the obstacles in our spine. And we can find our path back home. The important thing is that we've got to find our path back home. We can't keep coming back life after life. It's um, Shri 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 Glam Gan Ganapadaye Namaha Om Om Shri Hari Klim Glam Gan Ganapadaye Namaha Om Om Shreem Harim Kleem Glum Gan Ganapadaye Namaha Om the next one I'm going to do is Mother Kali. Um, Kareem, Kareem, 
Krim, Krim, Krim. Hum, hum, Dakshani Kalike. Krim, 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 Krim. Rim, hum, hum, swaha, um, green, 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 hum, hum. Dakshani Kalike Krim 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 Hum Hum Swaha Now when you want to learn about life and experience life, you need wisdom. And for that you need Kamlami uh, Mamatanji, sorry. So now we'll do Matanji Mantra. Om Aim Harim Aim Shreem Sri Matangesh Vari Swaha Om Aim Harim Aim Shreem Shreem Atangesh Bariswaha Aum Aim Harim Aim Shreem Shreem Atangeshwari Swaha Now we, next goddess we need is Kamlamika because for you to go home you need joy in your heart you have to love yourself to be able to focus on the energy of, of growth in terms of spiritual growth because Main, when I say spiritual growth, it's about knowing your spirit. Only when you know your spirit would you know that the need for going home is there. If you don't know your spirit, you don't know that need. Um, rim, rim, rim. Aim Kamlamika Swaha Aum Shreem Harim Shreem Aim Kamlamika Swaha Aum Shreem Harim, Shreem, Aim, Kamlamika, Swaha. Now, for those who have not heard me say this before, you, when you do mantras, it's not about singing, it's about frequency. So you want the frequency to enter your body and go within, because the God, Goddesses, Devadas, they're all within your body, not outside of you. Okay, welcome everybody who's here now. And hope you all enjoy today. Uh, before I start, I'm going to talk a bit. And then after that, I'd like you all to ask questions and have a, we want to have a discussion. That's the only reason why I started doing it on Zoom instead of on uh, YouTube. 
But then if we don't discuss, then we don't grow, okay? Now, we today we're going to speak about Tantra and sacred sexuality. What is sexuality? Now, if you ask a Tantric or you ask a Western, I mean, actually not so much even Western now, all over the world, every, every society, when they talk about sexuality, they talk about, they think in terms of sex. No, sexuality is an inner journey. It's about discovering who you are, whether to discover the male and female within your body, not about inner sex. So to, to discover your spirit, to discover the male and female within your body, you have to know one simple, it's the only possible path. Oh, okay, not the only possible path, the path that we can actually easily have access to and understand and study is Tantra. And a particular section of Tantra, which is known as Inner Tantric Yoga. Okay? Or you can also call it, like Dave Trolley calls it, Shakti and Deity Yoga. So basically, you want to connect with the Shakti within you, the yoga of Easter Devadas, okay? Or your chosen deity. Now, in my case, I've chosen Mother. Ganesh is something you can't go any, you can't do anything without Ganesh, okay? So my main Devada is like, Kali is my main Devada, okay, Easter Devada, which means, Everything I do, I do in her name. Everything I, every part of my journey, I seek her blessings. And then again, when you think in terms of Kali, you think in terms of, you think in terms, both all the gods and goddesses are a form of Brahma. Brahman actually, not Brahma, Bra Brahman. Brahman is God. It is the energy of God that is expressed, you know, God expresses, the element God expresses itself, okay, both as male and female, which, which we, some school of Tantra will consider it Shiva and Shakti, okay? And being, being a Shakta, I would consider Brahman to be Shiva and Shakti, okay? So uh, Vishnu White would say differently compared to what um, a Tantric Shakta would say. Then we talk about Atma Devada. That is you, you and I, okay? We, we are an aspect of God. So we can consider ourselves as God on earth. That is Atma Devada. That means you are the Deva within your Atma. Then, okay. There's, there's an interesting subject that I like to talk about, not today, but next week. It's about Shivalingam and the Shakti Yoni. Okay, when we talk about Shakti Yoni, we talk about from the gateway, which is the vagina, to the womb, and it goes on to the crown chakra and then connects to the universal Yoni. So that is why Women are very special in this, in this respect of your Tantra, which means you have, remember that your yoni is connected to your base chakra very closely. So that is where you have to di discover the union of Shakti and, I mean, the Lingam and yoni as a symbol of the primal, it's a symbol of the primal powers. So that one we will discover in depth next week. 
Okay, so we talk about working with the universal Shakti. That's the goddess or the, the power within us. Shakti is power. So when we talk about Shakti, we talk about power. What is the primal power of Shakti within us? Shakti is the cosmic energy, but Shakti is also the inner cosmic energy. So you, you, she's outside there, she's everywhere, she holds, the, she's Mother Nature, she's Mother Earth. So we have to feel her in everything. In, when I say feeling her in everything, we also have to learn to respect her in everything. Like, if you don't contribute to the goodness of Mother Earth, then you're not contributing to your own goodness. Because your own goodness also depends on how you live on this earth, how you contribute to this earth, how you harmonize yourself with everybody else. And one of the principal things you always got to remember, do you respect your mother? Do you respect the female race as a whole? that plays a very important part. So you can never find yourself if you do not respect motherhood. If you do not respect, I mean, you can have your differences as a man, you can have the differences with your partner. And, but whatever difference you have, the love for your partner should not diminish. Even if you go to the state of separating from your partner, the love should always rem remain. And same thing for the woman. If she has received the seed from the man and she has given passageway to ch a child or children, then at no time should she diminish the love she has for that person who's given that Instead of going to court and fighting divorce cases and becoming nasty, it has to be, you have, if you can't live together, you separate in harmony. You do not separate after war or do not separate and create war. Because when you create war, you don't win. Okay. Your partner does not win and your children suffer the, the battle. So you have to always remember that when you allow your, when you, as a couple, when your partner allows a womb to be a passageway to a child, you both have a committed responsibility in this universe to serve the need of the child. Now, I mean, we all make mistakes. I have made my own blunders in my younger days. But I've never stopped loving any of them. Because I'm not an easy person to be with. That's the other part. Because I, from very young, I see things beyond the limitations of our physical body. So I always strive for something higher in life. And I like to help others to do the same. But it's a full-time, it's a full-time career. It's a full-time job trying to go beyond this physical world. And so there are a lot of people who are, who love the idea of going beyond. But then going beyond has a lot of discipline. But when it comes to the discipline, they don't have that, the same aptitude towards that discipline. Then what happens is the relationship becomes a bit sour. Sour to the person who is with me, not to me. Because for me, that love is there. I enjoy that love and I still be, still be within the principle of that love. Now, the other part is just whenever we talk about mind, body and spirit. In the mind, there's Shakti. In the body, there's Shakti. And the spirit is Shakti. 
Okay, so when we talk about Shakti, all three of them are Shakti. And then when we speak about mind, it is not the brain. It is Shakti, it is the mind in every cell of our body, including the brain. That is why when we have uh, flashbacks, it actually originates in the body. But the brain interprets the origin, the the energetic effect of that particular my thought. Okay, so it's translation. Now, if you know yoga, you will find that Shakti is the principal energy of all yoga because you need to breathe in yoga. Yoga is, when you do Hatha Yoga, it is breath and movement. When you do sound, when you do Mantra Yoga or Shakti Yoga, you do sound and breath. All the time there is breath. Okay. And that breath is also Shakti. Now, when we talk about Shakti and we talk about relationships, what is Shakti in to do with the relationship? Because Shakti has everything to do with the relationship because you want to connect two spirits together, not two physical body like everybody else. At the way, at the moment, the way the world is going, we are focused on the spiritual, physical body. We have to go beyond and try to connect on a spirit level. This is where Inner Shakti Yoga comes in, and this is where Paratan Inner Shakti Yoga comes in. Paratan is a supreme form of yoga, of Tantra, sorry. Then Shakti of emotion. How, what has Shakti to do with emotion? Basically, Shakti has everything to do with emotion. Because our emotional self comes through that energy of Shakti, your heart chakra. Okay, but the element of thing comes from the navel chakra. So the element, the, the movement comes from navel chakra. The expression comes from heart chakra. So that is where, and Shakti is within both. There's nothing in our body that is not connected with Shakti. So the more we are connected to Shakti, the less emotional we become. Okay, that doesn't mean we don't feel. We don't have that much of an emotional turmoil within ourselves because we understand that everything is her desire. We just have to be enjoying that, that beautiful relationship with her. So now, I have spoken quite a bit. Have you all got any questions? Let's have a nice discussion about this. Sexuality. Everybody's very quiet. I'm calm, Babaji. When I come, darling, how are you? I'm well. I just wanted to tell you I love you. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I saw Lena had her hand up for a question. Okay. What? Okay. Who do? Who wants to start first? Me. Okay. Hi, Babaji. It's Lena. Yeah. I hope you're doing well this morning. And um, I had a question about it because I remember the last call and I was talking about, um, uh, we were talking about Yab Yum and uh, how to practice that spiritual practice. Uh, and while being single, I have the same question for this for this topic in terms of friendship um i have i have lost a lot of friends over the year and mm. i guess just going on my journey kind of discovering myself and sometimes having like a tug of war of like you know i you, you're talking about like we've all made our mistakes and things like that and that kind of pulled something on my heart because i know i'm not perfect but i'm still learning you know myself and i'm still learning my relationships and 
a big topic for me this year has been like relationships and just wanting healthy relationships around me. So I guess my question is, or my inquiry is like, how do you pull, pull, or not even pull, but uh, have that, that Shakti essence in relationships as far as, especially friendships and, and, you know, seeing that while building upon like new relationships and structures. Does that, does that uh, make sense? Yeah. I know I'll, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. The question is this, you can either dance alone or you can dance with somebody else. Okay. In either one of the dance, you have to find yourself first. Okay. The sex, when we talk about yabium or sexuality, we talk about the individual first. Mm -hmm. That essence of love, the sexuality is basically, is my female connected to my male and is my male connected to my female? So am I balanced spiritually? That is the most important, that is your sexuality. That's your, because when you are in union with yourself, that is when your male and female are in total balance then you find that the journey is easier. Now, the question here is just, we live in a very turmoil-based society. So the important factor is this, you have to remain stable. You have to remain detached. You cannot, you can enjoy relationship with someone, you can enjoy the union that happens while it's still beautiful. And you can keep enjoying it if it stays beautiful. But if it stands in your way of your mm -hmm. spiritual progress, then you have to let go. Let going is not a failure. When you let go of a relationship, you're not letting go of the person. Okay, per se, mm -hmm. because that love you have for the person remains. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the frequency that you share with that person diminishes because you, you, have, you have separated from the person. You're no more living with that person or what we consider a relationship. There's no failure and success in relationships. There's only failure and success of the individual. Mm. You understand? Because everything comes back to me. As I said, everything comes back to you. There is no somebody else that create a problem for you. You create the problem. How do you create the problem? It's because you're attached. And why are you attached? Because you're not in connection with your own sexuality. The sexuality is, I mean, Tantra is for the two, the union of the two, but the union of the two first comes from within yourself and then only to the world outside of you. If the union is not within yourself, if you don't know your own sexuality, then you'll always be in trouble because you are dependent on the other person because we always need. You know, either we need a male energy or we need a female energy. For men, we always need the female energy because we want to explore our own feminineness. For women, they need the male energy to explore their masculine side of themselves. But when we have explored our own sexuality within ourselves, then we don't need another person. So when we, when we are in a relationship with another person, without needing that person, then the dance is beautiful. It's very lightweight. The person does mm -hmm. not feel pressured by you. But this is only possible if both of you are walking on the same journey. If you're on the same path. If you're in two separate paths, you find the friction is always there. But also when the friction is there, what it does is this, it actually 
reduces your capacity for growth. Mm. So you don't want, that's why when last week I said, first week before to you that it's good that you're single. Mm. Because it's a good time not to look for a partnership, but to build your own strength first. Yeah. Find your own self. Find your own sexuality before you open yourself to receiving somebody else. Remember when your sexuality is strong, you, it's like you become honey and the bees will come around the honey. <laughs> you don't have to look for a partner. Mm. The partners will come to you. Okay? Did I answer Thank your you, question? Sir. Yes, it did. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Wanna come, Babaji? Wanna come. Uh, what do you mean by when you say opening to your own sexuality? What do you mean by that? Okay. In us, that is Shiva and the Shakti, or the male and female, or sun and moon. That energy within us, your right side is the male, the left side is the female. You remember when I taught you the first essence to do Bija mantras? You do Harim yeah. for the right side and Shreem for the left side. So when you do that, you call in the energy of the sun and you call in the energy of the moon so that the, your right side and your left side becomes harmonious. And that's what is inner sexuality is all about. The union of the male and female within you, Atanesvara. You know, the Shava, you see a lot of pictures of Shiva and Shakti as one. And that is what sexuality is all about. Did I answer your question? Yes. And how are you today? I'm very well, thank you. I'm good. See you again this week. Okay, anybody else? Babaji, it's Ajay again, Vanakam. Vanakam. <clears throat> um, I wanted to ask if you could share a bit about, um, because some of the, I know some of the, the participants here are just getting to know you. And I wanted to know if you could share just a little bit with them about um, this path, the, the Shakta Tantra tradition, the path, your lineage, how you came into, and um, just a little bit about the difference between the, the for instance, um, the Shaivism and um, the Shakta tradition. Okay. Now, how I came into this path, I was blessed in the sense that my mother is a great Shakti devotee. Actually, she's a Krishna devotee, but in Malaysia, all the temples, the main temples are Shakti, Mariaman temples. So from very young, I've been going to the mother and I'm a mother lover. So then comes the question of how did Kali come into my life? You see, when you go to any of these temples, you can't touch the statues of the goddess. The inner centum is always in a bath for what we call the unclean people, people who are not a Brahmin. Okay, the first thing is just let me answer you that question. Brahmin means someone who knows Brahma. It is not something that comes from birth of into a family, but birth in far as karma is concerned. Okay, so you can be a, a Brahmin by, by virtue of the fact of your karma in your past life. So this concept of Brahmins are clean and, and non-Brahmins are dirty. It's not unclean, it's not real. Okay, the Brahmin has from birth been trained to become to serve God. But now the question is, is, in today's world, I don't think any of them are serving God. They're serving themselves. It's a, become an occupation. Like you're a doctor or a 
or a butcher or a carpenter. There are good butchers and there are bad butchers. There are good carpenters and bad carpenters. So if all the Brahmins were real Brahmins today, they'll, they'll have a lot of saints walking around in town. But we don't have that. We have a lot of people using, using religion to make money. There are ways of making money. Okay, I do charge for my work. If you came to learn from me one-on-one -on -one because I have to pay my rent, I have to pay, I have to spend money in doing this, I have to pay for my equipment, everything. So somebody has to pay for it. So I have a nominal charge that I charge my students to learn with me. So my, my journey started from very young as a child, but it's only in 1976, 75, that I realized that my mission was to serve her. And so basically when I go to temple, I go to the area where Mother Kali is, which nobody else, very few people go to her, and which I also have access of touching her because nobody's watching me. So I go in and touch her and come out. And I had a very special connection with her from very young age. So it was part of my, I would thank my mother for going to temple every Friday without fail. And I, as the only son for the first 12 years of my life, I had the privilege of going with my mother all the time. And even after my brother came, I still kept going with my mother. Not so much my brother did. Both, I mean, he's religious and I'm more into spirituality. I've given up religion. Because religion is man-made, spirituality is God-made. So, and when I say God made the God within me. Now, the question about Shaivai and Shaktas. Shaktas are people who worship the Divine Mother. So everything revolves around her, that she is the mother of creation. Whereas if you go to a Shivai, Shaivai, the good part of Shaivai is that they still acknowledge Shakti. But they, they make Shiva as the prime, the God, the prime factor. In Tantra, as a whole, Shakta is the prime factor. Because she is Shakti, everything. She moves everything. She creates everything. She is everything. There's, there's a nice saying, without Adi Shankar would say, that Sh Shiva cannot do anything without the energy of Shakti. He is the person who collated the whole of the, the Vedas and brought it back together for the modern world to have it. So he is a very, very powerful individual as far as Tantra, Vedas, everything is concerned. So without Shakti, there's no Shiva. Without Shiva, Shakti is incomplete. The importance for Shakti is there in both Shaivite and Vishnavites. Vishnavites, you find that a lot of time when you go to a Vishnu temple, you don't find Lakshmi. Lakshmi is always separate. Yet, when they, they call Vishnu, they call Lakshmi Narayanan, not Narayanan Lakshmi. So they call Lakshmi first and then Narayanan. So there you find the, the power that the mother comes first, the father comes second. And when you talk about the human world that we live in, Mata, Pida, Guru, and then only Devam. So your mother comes first, first guru. The second guru is your father. Second, mind you. 
Then come people like me who teach. And then only God. You can't go to God without these three others. Without respecting your mother, your father, and your guru, you cannot find God. So anyone who thinks, like there's a lot of saying, you know, but the first part is this, before we go into the same, the first part is this, you have to also discover your inner guru. That is why in, tant in Tantra, when we worship, we say, Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwara. So the trinities, we consider them as gurus. And then we have Jupiter. The planet Jupiter is also guru. Not so much the planet, the deity that rules Jupiter, the planet Jupiter, is also guru. So you need to respect tri Trinity. You need to respect Brahaspade, that is Jupiter. I mean, the, the deity that rules Jupiter. Okay, you got to remember that the planets are one has an energy fall, but then there are deities that controls the planets or manages the planetary energies. So they're not the planets. So because a lot of time people say, oh, the, you know, you're talking about moon as God. And then you find that people are walking on God, you know, people are going to moon. It is not the moon that is God, the God that rules moon is Chandra. So when you talk about Saivite and, I mean, Vishnavites and Shaktas, you have to remember that they both worship the Shakti. Yet, in Shaivite, they think about Shiva. They're good for people who want to be monks. That's what I, that's my um, aspect of it. Because my grand uncle was a Shaivite. And he was, a, he was a, a single person. They go on meditation. They go on you know, deep contemplation, deep, the, the whole, whole thing, it's in terms of serving God. And they have no place for serving hum human. Whereas Shaktas, on the other hand, are into serving humanity and seeing God within. And here comes the importance of women in, this, in the Shakta tradition, because we worship the woman as Shakti, because she is the custodian of the womb, and the womb is connected to the universal Shakti. This is the, the very short glimpse view. So my path started with my mother, whom I love very much, and then went on to loving Mother Mariamma, and then eventually Mother Kali. And now, and then when I became um, more Vidya Yogi, I started worshipping Kali, Matanji, and Kamlamika, three of them. Kali to destroy all the demons within me. That's, you know, when you see an image of Kali, you find skulls all around her. That's the skulls of demons. And the demons are not out there but within us. So she destroys the demons within us. Matanji gives us the wisdom to know ourselves and to know the God goddesses within ourselves because we are the macrocosm and we are a mirror of the macrocosm. And Kamlamika gives us the inner prosperity, the feeling of love and feeling of inner beauty. Okay, Lena, can, you can now speak. Yes, thank you, Babaji. I have a question on a mantra for a Kali. Um, I'm still learning about the mantras and the power that they hold. And I wanted to know, are, is there a good mantra or a special mantra to start out to 
to just give thanks to Kali and to adore her and to um, grow in relationship <laughs> with her. Yep. The one that I do every time you see me. The last few weeks mm -hmm. I've started doing the mantras first. And Kali is the second mantra I always do. That mantra is good, good to start with. Okay. And you, if you want to know exactly how to do it, your guru, you know, she will show you how to do it. Thank you. Greetings. Greetings. Yes. Um, thank you so much for the offering. I have um, a question about um, exploring the inner sexuality. Mm. I know um, why we're doing it to, um, to make ourselves more balanced, right? And I know how we're doing it through the mantra and the breathing and the yoga. Mm. But I wanted to know, um, what does that look like? For me, I feel like I feel like I'm a little bit unclear. I feel like I'm more clear about what it will look like in a man than I'm clear about <laughs> what it will look like in a woman. Uh, what it looks like in a woman is more important at the moment. Of course, of course, of course, right? Mm -hmm. So well, I want to know what that would look like, right? Exactly. Okay. First thing is, is you reconnect with your grace. Okay. You mm -hmm. will understand your feminine quality. A good way of finding out that is, I don't know whether you, you can find videos of um, women in Africa walking or mm -hmm. women in India, village of India is walking. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not talking about supermodels. I'm talking about villages. And you find there's a bit of grace in them. Which, which city women, a lot of them have lost lost that because the the reason you, you lose that is because you're trying to emulate men you're trying to find your place in men's society instead of men trying to fill the place in a woman's society you see the role has changed over centuries about 5,000 years they started this journey of trying to suppress women and their powers out of fear for them. And okay, men have out of fear in a suppressed women over the, over the years. It took them a long time. Actually, it took, even then they didn't feel good enough at 2000, 2000 years ago when Christianity came into, into being, they even made it worse. Then Islam came and even made it even worse than that. So imagine why will all this religion try to suppress women? Because of their power. To, until today, men are still frightened of women. They don't show it, but they show it in the way they abuse women. In the way they, they try to fight with women or suppress women. You, when you find your grace, when you find that inner beauty, inner woman, and you find in the harmony you have with the inner man inside of you, then grace comes along. As I always say, okay, the, the, there's a simple way, but other than mantra, is to put a book on your head and walk until the day the book stops falling down. And after that, probably you can put some water, a, a um, jug of water on your head and walk. You need to get back to that very soft, graceful self in a woman. That is how you know whether she is in balance. Did I answer your question? Um, well, I feel like I have been... Um working on that aspect of myself. Like I've gone through the course with Aja. I've been working with some other beautiful women. So I feel like I have connected more with that grace. 
So mm-hmm. now I'm wondering what does that mean to activate with the man inside of me? I think that's the part I don't understand because now I'm kind of feel, I don't want to say lazy. It's not lazy, <laughs> but I'm feeling, I'm feeling like a little bit, like I need to find more of my motivation, right? So that's why I said we kind of understand a little bit easier. At least I do what it looks like in a man because when a man understands his feminine side, it's like, okay, he's more in touch with his emotions. He's not as enraged. But what does that, once a woman has come back in tune with that more feminine aspect of herself, okay, how does she balance it with that masculine to be um, her full self? It's, it's a big journey. The first thing is this, you have to be able to commit yourself at least a minimum of one hour a day. Okay, remember this, your commitment is to yourself. I mean, you spend all day thinking you're committing to yourself. You know, you think about makeup, you think about clothing, you think about food, you think about everything outside of yourself to satisfy or to, to entertain yourself, actually, not to live. Okay? So you spend, now instead of spending all the time taking care of the outer side of you, spend at least one hour, minimum one hour. Two hours is even better. Then you'll find that you will find that inner grace. Okay, you have a choice. You, have, you can either come and study with me online or you can go to Asha. She can teach you the same signs that would take you into feeling your inner devadas, your deities, with the sun and the moon or Shiva and Shakti within you. You have, it is, it takes, it takes time, but you have to commit yourself to that journey. Baba G is Asha. I wanted to, yes, share with that because I, I do Ananda greetings. Um, beautiful. Um, I think, because I think the question too, yes, that you answered Baba G, um, is what I was going to um, say to her is that, yes, it does take time. Like, it takes time and it's a consistent practice. And sometimes we um, want to see results quicker or we think too much in our head as opposed to being in our bodies and really feeling what that is. But I think the question you were asking is more, what does the what does the, the awakened masculine energy look like um, in within a female form? And Babaji can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I think that that it is just the power, that power that we have as women, the energy, that power is Shakti, but when we are balanced, we have the softness and the grace, but we're also powerful. We're confident. Um, and we're able to move throughout life in our feminine power and grace confidently. And that represents the balance of being able to be softened in and softened back into grace, but still um, upright and powerful in everything that we do. Just not in the powerful, uh, distorted way that we see men what we think they are uh, when we think of powerful men now is often distorted. So I think that may be some of what um, is misconstrued because we see how men behave in society and it, it is very distorted and destructive. Not all men, of course, because you see Babaji being very powerful, very confident, but very, very graceful as well. And so um, even looking at his masculine as an example of how to be um, intelligent yet powerful yet gentle yet loving and graceful and being all of those things but it's really not something for me it wasn't something that happened mentally that I could um, kind of really put into words but more and um, energetic and something you feel in your body I think that yeah, make it makes sense because it takes a woman to know what she's like even though I'm the teacher <laughs> <laughs> because it's difficult for me to sort of say I mean she, actually you gave a good, a good answer for the question uh, one thing I like to say is this it is 
the Shakti gives you that power. Shiva gives you that grace. Mm. Okay, the male, when the male in you enters into you, then you find that grace of Shakti. So when it's balanced within you, you find that you become a lot stronger, but a lot softer. Softness is strength. Softness is not weakness. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you both. And I definitely have to accept not being able to fully always conceptualize it and understand it's yeah, more it's of just a, a what is. So thank you. It is very experiential. You have to experience it to actually, I mean, it's very difficult to put in words, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an experiential thing. You need both, you need your, sex, your sexuality, the Shiva and Shakti within you or sun and moon within you have to come into balance. They got to be able to dance together. Have I answered your question, my dear? Oh yes, thank you both so much. Pleasure. Anybody else with a question? I don't have a question. Screening again, um, Babaji. This is Teresa again from earlier. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to give thanks again um, for this time that you are giving to us. And um, just to allow you, well, just to let you know that um, the message today definitely resonated with me. I... Um, in regards to emotions and um, emotional turmoil and how our emotions come from Shakti and we have less emotional turmoil the more we are connected and knowing that everything is in heart desire. Um, I realized that you touched base on attachment and I think that my uh, me trying to control situations in the past definitely did um, cause a lot of emotional turmoil. And I'm understanding why um, those attachments were in place usually is um, from fear. Yeah. And um, from this, I think it was um, divine that I'm here to know that the less I try to control, the more um, faith I will have and as a result the less emotional turmoil I will come across. The question is this, you have to trust yourself. Mm -hmm. Only in trusting yourself will you be free from emotional turmoil. So basically you got to surrender to yourself. Trust that you are divine. And then work towards improving the divinity. Because when you feel divine, nothing affects you. I mean, I would say, okay, I wouldn't say nothing would affect you. Then you've got to be God. You'll have slight, you know, it's like a, a mosquito bite. Pew, gone. Instead of going in and spending, say, half your lifetime trying to, you know, like a lot of people don't let go of them parents they blame their parents for their madness because they they have a reason to blame because they don't understand the your, the parents don't understand the meaning of parenthood and you as a child that's come into their life don't understand why you came there so both are at fault so time to actually forgive forget and start loving your parents, loving everything around you, then you find that the turmoil will be less intense. Does my answer help you? It does. Thank you so much, Babaji. Vanakam. Vanakam. There's another minute. Anyone has any questions? Vanakam. This is Tiffany. I think I spoke to you last week. How are you? <laughs> Very good. How are you? Amazing. Thank you. So, I, my, mm, huh? <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Carry on. My, 
My question is a little bit different. You know, I, I came from um, a strong Christian background and I, I feel so connected to um, this work, especially working with Ajna. But my question is, how do I begin? Like, I am in the course, but sometimes I feel so stagnated and don't even know which direction to even take. I've, I've looked at, I've gone through um, this course, this is my second time, but I think it's a mental or emotional, spiritual blockage to the reason why I'm not even devoting much time to it. So I'm just trying to find the best way to fully embrace and start. I hope that makes sense. I think first you have to remember that first, you, there's no difference between Christianity and Tantra, okay? So you are going back into your own path into this life. The question is just, are you, re are you really committed to yourself? I would say no. So that is the first thing you have to come into. You, do you want to be happy? I desire to, yes, sir. Okay, you desire to be happy. Now, when you want, do you drive a car? Yes, sir. How long did you study to drive a car? Mm, about two months. Two months, okay. Driving class, yeah. What do you do for a living? Um, I'm a trainer for a dermatologist. Okay, so you have spent a lot of years studying. Yes, sir. To do a simple job. Correct. Okay. Does that give you happiness? On some aspects, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I enjoy my job. I do, yes. No, but does it give you happiness? I didn't say you, whether you enjoy your job. Um, true happiness, I would say no. Exactly. So now if you have spent so much time to become what you, I mean, just to get a job, an employment, what about your life? Who you are? Your inner divinity, which is more important. Yeah, that's more important. Okay, so then learn to commit yourself. I hear you. Thank you. Okay. If you want real kick, because I shall not be kicking you. Come to me. <laughs> I'll give you nice kicks. Yeah, he'll give he'll give you kicks. I don't give the kicks. <laughs> 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 Maybe I need to start giving the kicks. And I think, <laughs> I Where think, do I start? I I've looked on your website, but yeah. <laughs> you can start anytime. Yeah, you but see, where I, do I, I start? Like I've, I've looked on your website and I saw the wound class and where do I start? Like where no, would I actually, no, 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 no. You start by, by, by enrolling my online teachings. Okay. Okay, I do like what Asha does. I do every, every week, one day a week for one and a half hours. Mm -hmm. six, and you pay six weeks blocks, blocks of six weeks. Okay? Mm -hmm. the, the good part of it is this, you got to commit to saving $70 do, uh, a week. Okay. Okay. And then if you commit yourself, then you can come. I'll give you nice kicks. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nice kicks. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a loving kicker. Yes, yes, yes. I, I understand. People who know me, have met me personally, they'll tell you I'm a loving kick master. Amen. <laughs> I agree. I agree. You know, we we'll work one on one like that because when when I'm working with you all, I'm working with you all in groups, and so mm -hmm. the the concepts are given, the practices are given, but you have to make the commitment to do the work. Whereas when you work with Baba G directly online weekly, you have you know you're accountable. He's he's going to hold you accountable for the work. He's going to. Um, <clears throat> talk to you about your life and what's going on and give you direction in those ways so he's giving you more personalized so I'm giving you um, a different set of tools well I mean I'm giving you tools that he's imparted unto me as well as some other you know these other feminine practices to help you be in grace but he's going to hold you accountable <laughs> and <laughs> and help you to work you know and work specifically with things that may be going on or giving you mantras specific to what's 
uh, going on in your life and based on your chart in that way. And so I don't work one-on-one -on -one right now. I will eventually, mm -hmm. but right now you work with Babaji one-on-one -on -one. <laughs> and, it's, and it's a blessing that we have him here, you know, to be able to work with him directly. It's not often, um, you know, that the teacher finds, you know, the, the teacher finds us when we're ready. The teacher chooses us. You know, the guru chooses you um, as a student. It's an honor for you to be able to have the, the privilege to work with him one-on-one -on -one because people search their whole lives, you know, to find this type of relationship and often you don't. And it really is a relationship that develops. So if you do want to go deeper and have that accountability and support, then um, I highly suggest working with him one-on-one. -on -one. Give thanks, you know, and it's not that the our courses don't have everything. I believe, honestly, it's a mental thing because I'm so analytical. It's it's stepping out of probably the masculine side and stepping into the feminine side and just trusting. Well, but for me, why, like that's I what the whole course talking. is about. <laughs> yeah, that's why you need the kinks. <laughs> Thank you. I guess you both just read me. Y'all read me, and y'all. <laughs> you already knew what I was trying to say without me saying it. <laughs> yeah, because I think I think it's not because you want you want something to tangible. Yes. Okay, you don't want something theoretical. Okay. <laughs> so you need you need that you need that you need one on one. Okay. If you want, then how to do I write? How do I register? I just go on your site and it looks and it says no, no, one no, on one. No. All you do is email me. Okay. Because that my one on one, which I do, uh, like it's straight. You write to me and I'll give you the uh, where you can send the money, and then you start. Okay. We make a we make a time and date that we meet every week, and then we go from there. All right. Aja, can you send me the email? <laughs> I will. I'll I'll type it in the chat and then I will um I'll also send it out to all of you in the email. All right, give thanks. Okay, everybody, thank you for being here. Any other questions? Sorry. I have a question, Isleena. I'm sorry. I, I, no, 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 don't be really sorry. Interested. Okay, thank you. I really enjoyed that that last talk I was laughing about the kicks and I feel the same way um I was gonna do the sacred room course in January but I do feel called to work with you one-on-one -on -one, um because I am so grateful for Ajasa's teachings and I want to just continue on and I just wanted to share like something special that happened maybe two months ago um I was near one of uh like a pond or a lake it was a lot of water and I was just speaking to the water and saying, like, I want to get deeper into my teachings um, with the goddess temple. And I would love to work with Baba G. And then as soon as I finished speaking and giving my prayers, there, there were three little girls that walked up to me and they were selling jewelry pieces. And it was a beautiful red, um, a red ring. And I was like, that was, you know, you have the little, the signs that show up, like literally as soon as I finished that, they walked up to me and they're like, would you like to buy this jewelry? And I was like, absolutely. And I just, I keep that ring because I just look at it and I think about like what I felt. So I'm just grateful to be speaking with you and I'm grateful for Aja Shah and I'm, I'm looking forward to working with you in the future. So, yeah. Okay. Take care then. Mm -hmm. I'm Yeah, we would, I would love you to, to keep being committed to your spiritual journey. Babaji, is that the email that you want them to have to reach you, Sriparam at Padatan.com, or would you like them to email you at a different one? I can type it in for you and send it to them no, also. No, no, I can. The, the Yahoo account would be better. Yahoo is better? Okay. Okay, so you all disregard. Oh, the I have said Mahavidya. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll send that one out to them by email also. Okay, then. Take care, everybody. Thank you for being here. I'd like to say vanakam to all of you. Vanakam. 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 Thank you. Vanakam. 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 See you all next week. Next week will be an interesting subject. 
Thanks. Looking forward to it, Babaji. Vanakam. Vanakam. Vanakam, Babaji. Thank you. Bye.